to work. 10.31 a.m. I've successfully transported into the checkers lab in less than five seconds. No complications. At least I don't think so. Hey, snoozer, I broke the record! Sno oh! Sorry, pal. I forgot to put you together. All right, what do we need? Trunk, that's what we need. Oh, no, no, this is too long. Hold on, snoozer, one second. Much better. All right, snoozer, I'll have you together in a jiff. Googly eyes, that's what I need. Sorry, I got so distracted. Uh, expander, hold on. So distracted this morning, trying to break my record, which I did. <sighs> snoozer, I put the wrong thing in. Look what I did. Oh my goodness. <sighs> we don't want this. We want googly eyes. There they are. One and two. There we go. All right, snoozer. You need your battery. Let's get that going. Which button was it? Is it this one? Oh boy. Supercharged battery ball. Snoozer. Or guess what? I broke the transport record less than five seconds. No complications. Checkers, your nose is gone. What? I mean, your legs are gone. <laughs> I got you. You actually had me there, snoozer. Hey, anyway, you ready for our trip today? What trip? The trip. We're going to a place to learn about extinct animals. We had the whole day planned. That's I can't believe you just said that. Said what? Pterodactyl, the, the flying dinosaur. Because we're going to a place to learn about extinct animals, just like the, the pterodactyl dinosaur. What's a pterodactyl? What? Never mind. Seat belts. Check. Backpack? Check, check. All right, snoozer, ascending in three, two, one. And we're off. Autopilot activated. So where are we going exactly? Snoozer, you know it's a surprise. Aw, oh, come on! At least give me a hint! Alright, I give you three hints, and let's see if you can get it. Woohoo! I'm really good at these games. Checkers, I'm really smart. Well, we'll see, Snoozer. Alright, hint number one. It is really big. Hint number two. It has lots of information about science. And hint number three. It has real life dinosaur bones in it. Hmm. Oh boy, this is hard. Keep thinking, you'll get it. I've got it! The Science Museum! Nailed it! That's right, we're going to the Science Museum, learning about extinct animals. Animals that are no longer with us here on Earth. I know you're thinking of giant dinosaurs and enormous apes, but a lot of times extinct animals can be really small. Sometimes smaller than animals we see in our lives today. Like what? That's a great question, Snoozer. You know what? Let's bring out our mutual friend, Zoc the Robot, to answer that question. Hey, Zoc, can you give us some information about extinct animals? Zoc the Robot, at your service. Activating excited voice. More than 99% of all species that have ever lived on Earth, amounting to over 5 billion species, are estimated to have died out. 
There have been at least five mass extinctions in the history of life on Earth, and four in the last 350 million years, in which many species have disappeared in a relatively short period of geological time. Today, scientists divide different time frames of Earth to organize extinct animals, among other things. The three most recent eras are the Paleozoic Era, 541 to 251.902 million years ago, the Mesozoic Era, 251.902 to 66 million years ago, and the Cenozoic Era, 66 million years ago to present day. Extinct animals of the Paleozoic Era include the Europterid, or sea scorpions, and a class of Placodermi, or armored fish. Extinct animals of the Mesozoic Era include the Tyrannosaurus rex, the Brachiosaurus, and the Stegosaurus. Extinct animals of the Cenozoic Era include the woolly mammoth, the dodo bird, and the elephant bird. Thanks, Ot. Wow. Well, that is what I call an information overload. And I hope we get to talk to a real expert at the museum who can tell us more about the extinct animals. Wow, snoozer, we have a great day planned. Let me pull up the map. We are headed for Rainbow Way. Once we cross through, we'll be right at our destination, the Buffalo Museum of Science. Along the way, we're gonna get a health tip from Dr. Dan and your teacher, Mrs. Hamilton's coming on to do a dinosaur craft with you. Yes, yahoo! Well, that'll be fun. Dinosaur craft that you can make and take. Hey, snoozer, here come the books. Let's check out a few. What was the button for that net? Is it that one? Here you go, snoozer. We have Dinosaurs Before Dark, a Magic Treehouse book by Mary Pope Osborne, and Don't Let Them Disappear by Chelsea Clinton. Awesome, well those will be great books to read, especially when we're talking about extinct animals and dinosaurs. What are they about? Well, I'll tell you, snoozer, so... Well, well, wait a minute. We're hitting some turbulence. Checkers pad! No! Hey, Zod, run a tracking on that checkers pad. Location, winter woods. All right, it's in winter woods. Oh, great! In winter woods! Now we'll never find it! No, it's okay, Snoozer. I have a tracker on every one of my inventions. We'll find it in no time. Hey, but while we're up here, do you want to do the dinosaur craft now? Yes, please! That'll be great, you get to make your own dinosaur craft. If we're gonna make a dinosaur craft, we're gonna need an art box. Let's see, which button? That one. No! Yikes. Sorry, Snoozer, I'm gonna have to fix that thing. All right, let's bring on Mrs. Hamilton, your teacher, and we are going to make your art project. Hello, Snoozer, are you ready to make our craft? Yes, I am, Mrs. Hamilton. Well, we are gonna be making a dinosaur, and it looks like this. Oh. All right, so we better get work, and we have two sheets, and let's go start cutting out the pieces. Did you get your pieces all cut out? Yeah! All right, well, let's start putting it together. So we are gonna start, let's start something, hmm, let's start with the eyes right here. So we're gonna put a little glue. Now when I have a big glue stick like this, I can stick my eyes right on there. And press them on. And if it's a little glue stick, you can just make the dots on your object and place them on. So I got my eyes. Now, we gotta put these bony plates on the back. So if you have them all set and ready, and you just take your glue and 
put it all across the top and down the back. And you can try and stick them right on. I think I might take off my plate after all, the last plate, because I want to see the tail. How'd you do? Does yours look like that? Here it is. Oh, that's wonderful. All right, well, great job. I had a great time working with you today. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. If you would like to email Checkers and Snoozers, send your emails to checkers at checkerslibrarytv.com. We always look forward to hearing from you. Snoozer, how you doing? What do you need? I have a question. What's your favorite thing about dinosaurs? Oh, dinosaurs. Well, I absolutely love dinosaurs. I've enjoyed learning about dinosaurs ever since I was a little kid. Now, of course, there's tons to like about dinosaurs, but as a doctor, the thing I love the most is their diet. Their diet? That's right. Now, some dinosaurs did eat a variety of foods, but most dinosaurs ate nothing but plants, which means those dinosaurs got big and strong by eating only vegetables. That must have been a lot of vegetables. Absolutely. Some dinosaurs were even known to put an entire tree branch in their mouth in just one bite. Should I do that too? No, Snoozer. That would be a little bit too much for you and me. These dinosaurs weighed hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of pounds. We're a little bit smaller. So just two to three servings of vegetables every day would be just perfect for us. Great! Thanks, Dr. Dan! Absolutely, Snoozer, my pleasure. Did you know? The dodo bird was a flightless bird like a penguin. It lived on an island in the Indian Ocean. The dodo bird was 29 to 51 pounds. Fallen fruits from trees, as well as nuts and roots. The dodo bird went extinct before 1681, and humans are largely to blame. Sorry, dodos. I'm not a human. I'm a robot vacuum. The library has tons of books about dodos. Visit the library to learn more. Hey, Zot, run another track on the checkers pad. Last known location, 100 feet west. No longer tracking. No longer tracking? Must be too cold out. Aren't you going to be cold? No, not for long, snoozer. Now that's more like it. Nah, shouldn't take long. I think I'm roughly in the right place. 
Run that scan again. You're about 20 feet from the last track. Okay, good. Activate metal detector. Hello, old friend. All set, snoozer. <sighs> I love winter woods. Snoozer, do you hear that? Hear what? It's like a rumbling. I don't know. Oh boy. Get the car ready, snoozer. Get it ready. Snoozer, get the car ready. Whoa. Snoozer, hold on, I gotta get us out of here. And now, the question of the week. What is your favorite dinosaur? Thanks for joining us for the question of the week. <laughs> well, that was not part of our schedule, Snoozer. Oh my, a giant doggy! Are those an extinct animal? Yes, I mean, no, no! There has never been a dog that big, Snoozer, ever, ever. Dog that big is only possible in Fuzzleland. They call him the Beast of Winter Woods. Oh my goodness! Yeah, snoozer, so dogs don't really actually get that big. But dogs evolved from wolves, you know. Really? That's right, and the biggest wolf species of all time was called the dire wolf. And the dire wolf is extinct? For thousands of years, yeah. That's sad. I'd like to meet one. Well, snoozer, sometimes extinction can be part of life. Uh, some animals have disadvantages, so they don't last as long. And there's really not much we can do about it. But other times, we can help play our part and help animals be around forever. Actually, you know what? That's what Chelsea Clinton's book, Don't Let Them Disappear, is all about. It's about things like pandas and elephants and giraffes. Pandas aren't extinct, silly checkers. Well, they're not extinct, Snoozer, but pandas are what we call endangered. Endangered species means there aren't a lot of them left. And if we don't do something about it, some of these animals may become extinct eventually. But if we play our part, we can help these animals be around forever. Whew, I hope so. Yeah, this book is fantastic. It's got all sorts of great information. You get to see animals you might not have even known were endangered species. It talks about their level of endangerment, why they're endangered, and what we can do to play our part. Another thing I love about this book is the great illustrations. I love how all the animals look. They have great detail in them. And when you get to the end of the book, it has some great information about things we can do to help animals avoid extinction. It also talks about animals that have become extinct. It has so much information, it gets us going right along to becoming animal experts, and that's something I love about the book. Awesome! The other book is called Dinosaurs Before Dark. Hey, I know this one! 
to one of the Magic Treehouse books. That's right, Snoozer, you love the Magic Treehouse books, and we've read a bunch of them. And this is the very first Magic Treehouse book, Dinosaurs Before Dark. It's the first time you get to see Jack and Annie going on an adventure inside their Magic Treehouse where they travel to prehistoric times and meet with real dinosaurs. Sometimes they're running away from them, but they're learning great information about dinosaurs. Now this book right here is the anniversary edition, and it's in full color. Oh! Yeah, well the original book, well, let me show you, Snoozer. Looked a bit like this. Oh, cool! So which version's better? Well, Snoozer, no version's really better, they're just different. The original version was in black and white, and there weren't as many pictures in it, so you might have to close your eyes and imagine things as I'm reading it to you. The anniversary edition has more pictures and is in full color, so you can just admire the beautiful illustration on display. So, there are different versions for different moods you're in. Either one works perfectly fine. So we have the Magic Treehouse book, Dinosaurs Before Dark by Mary Pope Osborne and Don't Let Them Disappear by Chelsea Clinton. Now there might be other books about extinct animals and dinosaurs that we could read, Snoozer. So, hey Zot, do you have any other book selections for us? Zot, the robot at your service. Today's selections are Dean the Dinosaur by Sid Hoff. How Do Dinosaurs Say Goodnight by Jane Yolen. The Big Book of Dinosaurs by Darren Nash. Endangered Animals by Ben Hoare. Theo the Source, The Dinosaur Who Loved Big Words by Shelley R. Johannes. Dinosaurs Love Underpants by Claire Friedman and Ben Court. Some books about endangered or extinct animals. Goodbye. Thanks, Zot. What a great selection. We're going to have our hands full, Snoozer. We're going to read all these books this week, but if we can't find all these books, I'm sure a librarian can help us out and find other books that are like this. Sounds like a plan? I can't wait to read one of those books. But first, I'm so excited to visit the museum. Yeah, and we're actually getting pretty close to that rainbow. Oh, I wish I could meet a huge extinct animal. Yeah, well, unfortunately we can't meet a lot of these animals, but that doesn't mean we can't meet them in our imagination. What do you mean? Well, you know what? I'll show you. Hey, Zach, can you send us the mystery toy box? You're gonna love this, snoozer. Drones above the van, entry in three, two, one. Oh, that's a big box. Snoozer, guess what we have? What is it, what is it? It's the Imaginex Megabyte Shark. What a great toy. Sharks aren't extinct, silly checkers. You're very right, Snoozer. And in fact, look how small a person looks next to him. This shark looks like it could have never existed before. But Snoozer, did you know there used to be a shark as big as a school bus? No way. That's right, Snoozer. It was called the Megalodon. It lived 23 million years ago up to 3.6 million years ago. 23 million years ago? That means the Megalodon existed at the same time as the dinosaurs! Not quite, Snoozer. Dinosaurs actually existed 243 million years ago, up to 233.23 million years ago. Which is why it's so amazing that people were able to dig up dinosaur bones, put them together like puzzle pieces, and learn so much information about them. It's one of the greatest achievements in history. It's not quite as old as a dinosaur, but don't worry, this thing's been extinct for a long time. You won't be seeing one of these swim around the ocean anytime soon. But this is such a cool toy with so many features that I would like to take a closer look. I love when we do this. That's right, Snoozer. Buckle up. We are headed into the toy realm. Did you know? The woolly mammoths were almost the size of African elephants. 
Adult males weighed five tons. They have been extinct for somewhere between 11,000 years to 40,000 years ago. They had little itty bitty ears, which prevented heat loss. Their trunk was 6.6 feet long, and their tusks were 14 feet long. Oh my! My trunk is only one foot long. I need to start working out more. Is that how that works? The library has tons of books about woolly mammoths. Visit the library to learn more. We're here! Woohoo! But where is the shark? Looks like they're headed off on an ocean adventure. I'm getting the feeling they might be running into some trouble. Right. Let's go to work. Ahoy there. Hello, everyone. I am Snoozer. What are you guys doing? We are on a treasure hunt. We believe there is a large treasure chest deep under the water, and we intend to retrieve it. Very treasure? That sounds like fun! Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. There is said to be an ancient beast that lives in these waters. We are taking every precaution. Can we come? No, I'm afraid it's far too dangerous. Aw, oh, man. No fair. It's okay, Snoozer. We can watch from the van. Oh, okay. Right. Well, I'll get going now. All set, Captain. Commence the transformation! I wanted to see the Mega Pikachu Ginormous Sharky! Well, if we did enter the Megabyte Shark, that means he might be out in the ocean somewhere. I think they're going to need a bigger boat. Oh, I'm not too worried about them, Snoozer. Remember, they're just toys. But if you are worried, you can always use your zoom eyes and keep an eye on them. Okay, crew. Let's go to work.
Good job, Dan. Checkers! I think I saw it! How big? It was like as big as the blue submarine down there. No, it'd be bigger than that. That was probably a great white. Duh. All right. Well, that was an eventful day. Be the Megalodon. Let's go. All right, we're getting close to the spot. Get ready. the road trip, snoozer. Let's go. You can say that again, Snoozer. But it wasn't just big sharks around Earth. There were all sorts of giant animals that roamed the Earth. Like this one right here. It was called the Dinosuchus. It was up to 39 feet long. There was an ape called the Gigantopithecus, up to 12 feet tall. That's over twice as tall as a gorilla. Of course, the woolly mammoth was in the same family as the elephants of today. The saber-toothed tiger is closely related to modern-day tigers and lions. There is even a snake, the Titanoboa, up to 42 feet long. Nope. Don't worry, Snoozer. It's been extinct for millions of years. You won't be seeing any of those around. So did all the animals used to be giant? You know what? Hey, Za, do you have any information about extinct animals that were really small? A relative of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Tyrannosaur Dylon, weighed only 25 pounds and was covered in feathers. A prehistoric shark known as the Falcatus were only one pound. A relative of the raptor, the genus of Microraptor, had a length of just two and a half to 3.9 feet and a wingspan of 3.3 feet. It weighed just over two pounds. Thanks, Sod. See, Snoozer, there were all sorts of tiny animals around all over the Earth back in the prehistoric times. Checkers, I see the rainbow! You're right, Snoozer. We're at the rainbow. All right, if we're gonna cross the rainbow way, we have to be wearing our safety suits. 
Brace yourself, snoozer. Changing in three, two, one. Awesome. All right, snoozer, here we go. Going through the rainbow. Well, we're here. Yay! All right, snoozer, let's get ready and head inside the Science Museum. Stay tuned as we check in with the library. Hey guys, it's Miss Shar. I am here with a sneak preview of what you're gonna see if you come in for summer reading. I'm sure that you've watched the Checkers um, TV show and you can also stop in and pick up the craft that goes with that. So. Um, I hope you did watch that and I hope you found it lots of fun. Um, each week there will be a, some kind of craft to make. So like I said, this week one is dinosaur. I think number two may be a camel. So we just wanted you to see our decorations and know that our theme this year is of course tales and tales. So I'm going to have you come over and going to show you just a couple of things that you might see this summer here at the library. So come on, follow me. So I'm just going to show you a couple of the crafts that you might see. That's week one. You're also going to get a game to take home and a dice to play. This is for our independent readers. Okay, Our um, Read to Me kids have other things that they're going to be doing that are super fun. What do you think of our tiger? Isn't he pretty cool? Miss Shar doesn't want to take him down when summer reading's over. I really like that. So we have lots of things going on. As you can see, there's all kinds of crafts and things to do. And this is Mortimer Moose. And you're going to find out about looking for Mortimer Moose all around Willard. Okay? He's, he's been on quite a few adventures. So you're going to be able to look for him and then you'll get your name in for a prize at the end when it's all done. So, all right, let's go over and look at the prizes that we've gotten for this year. So I also wanted to show you that, you know, our desk area is our habitat when we're here at work. So this is where an animal might live. You know, there's all different habitats that we have around our desk. I think there's oceans and wetlands and savannas and all kinds of things. As you come in, take time to read some of the facts that are here. Look at some of the animals. Maybe you can even look some up and tell Miss Shar what some other animals might be that live in, the, let's say, a savanna or a rainforest. That'll be kind of fun. I learned a lot just looking the things up for myself, so I hope you'll have fun with that. So summer reading's going to work the same way it did last year. We have a bingo style blog, and on it you might have to read or visit the library read or watch a virtual library program, read or build a house out of cards. So fun stuff on here. So you can read or do what's on here, okay? You need to be able to do five of those each week in order to get your, um, your name put in for the drawing for the prizes each week. Um, we will be putting some stickers on there for the kids as well. So. Um, super simple. You'll come in, we'll put your name, and we'll give you a number on your log so that you always know um, whose is whose. So these are our prizes for our younger kids. These are our Read to Me prizes. Number one, number two, three, and number four is super fun too. It's Caring for Animals Farm. And there's a couple of books and things with that. And you can read on each one to see what's inside. This year we're asking that you don't touch things though, so if you would just read and look with your eyes, that would be appreciated. These are for the older kids, and again, we have everything listed that's in the prize. This one's really cool. It has a tent in it, some binoculars, there's a magnifying, a pocket magnifier, a compass, a critter cage, and of course there's Happy the Hedgehog in there. This one is an art project package, and it has a 500-piece art set. There's lots of stuff in here. There's a Bob Ross happy little sticker puzzle book, a coloring book. There's movies. There's a yarn llama, all kinds of cool stuff. 
And the fourth prize, Miss Char's still working on, so it's going to be a surprise, even to me. So I'm going to find something really cool, though, I promise. So as you can see, some of our other decorations. We love that it's all about animals this year, and we hope that you will, too. So don't forget, join us as soon as you can and get started. It'll be lots of fun. See you soon. And now it's time for the joke of the week. Why was a T-Rex afraid to go to the library? Because her book was 60 million years overdue. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Look at that snoozer, Rethink Extinct. Let's take a look inside and see all the cool things they have. Checkers, what's all this stuff? Great question, snoozer. Let me turn my fan on so my helmet doesn't fog up. So the museum has done a really amazing job of separating all of the extinct animals into various timelines. So we can know when they existed on Earth, how long they've been gone for, why they went extinct, and even some information about current animals that are endangered and what we can do to help them. So over here we have our first age, the Paleozoic Era. Now this is the era of 542 million years ago. So these are some of the animals that existed in the Paleozoic Era. So number one is the Europterid, which is closely related to modern arachnids like the spider or the scorpion. We also have the head of a large armored shark. This is a species that had a shark-like body with a bony armor covering its head. I want to see this thing! Ouch! Well, up to this point, Snoozer, we were talking about the Paleozoic Era, but now we're on to the Mesozoic Era. That is the era of dinosaurs, just like this one right here, the Triceratops. But actually, I wanted to show you something, Snoozer, because earlier today, you said the word pterodactyl. But now, we reclassified that dinosaur to be called the pterosaur, flying lizards. These are the dinosaurs that were flying the skies during the Mesozoic era. Really? Cool. So one of the great debates over this dinosaur was how it actually would stand in real life. A lot of paleontologists are arguing that it wouldn't stand in this squatted position. So some museums have actually changed this dinosaur. They've taken the bones apart and reconstructed them to have the dinosaur stand in a different way. Snoozer, these here are real dinosaur bones. Look how big they are. This here, Snoozer, is the cast of a Tyrannosaurus rex femur bone. Now, the scientists used femur bones like this to measure how tall the Tyrannosaurus rex actually was and they found out that it was also 40 feet long. Pretty cool. Now we're getting to the Cenozoic era. We are getting to animals that we're more and more familiar with. This here is the skull of the dire wolf and the saber-toothed tiger. These are some pretty big bones. These are the bones of the mastodon. It's an extinct group of species distantly related to modern elephants. And we can see a lot of features of this animal do line up pretty closely with the modern elephants, with the long tusks, the big teeth, all that stuff. And this is one of the big things about this whole exhibit, the story they're trying to tell. This here is just a simple lowland gorilla, which we know exists right now, but it's critically endangered. That means there are not many of these gorillas left on Earth. And that's because largely of human intervention. Humans are hunting these animals, humans are taking down their forests, and they're leaving them critically in danger. So that's why it's important for us to read stories, go to museums, learn about these animals, why they went extinct, why they're currently endangered, and what we can do to help them.
Well, Snoozer, what did you think of the Science Museum? I loved it. I'm glad we got to see the dinosaur bones. And I can't believe animals used to be that big. I know, it's just hard to believe that there were literally giant animals roaming the Earth millions of years ago. And we're really lucky to have all the animals that are around with us right now. And that's why it's so important for us to read books, learn about them, become animal experts, and find out what we can do to help them, especially the endangered species. Yes! I want to read these two books when I get home! And then, I want to read ten more dinosaur books tomorrow! Wow. <laughs> Well, that'll be great, Snoozer. And you know what? We're gonna be going on another adventure pretty soon, meeting with experts, and going to amazing places on our next reading road trip.